Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, a compilation of interesting and useful information when working with model steam engines and boilers. After speaking on the phone yesterday with one of my patrons who was having a few difficulties maintaining steam pressure in his boiler, I thought that this video would be very useful. A few years ago I produced a three episode series titled A Quest for Fire. If you visit my website and look through the playlists you will find it. The compilation videos that I make like this are for my Patreon supporters only, they're not for public YouTube. And these compilations are really trailers for the main series. I do this for the benefit of my patrons. So when I got a bad comment from a patron the other day, who had in the past made other snidey comments, I actually removed him. Maybe it's a coincidence, but I doubt it, because the day after, a new Patreon supporter appeared with the same surname. Anyway, to reiterate, I don't make these compilation videos just for fun. And they're not very quick to make, I have to search through a lot of footage. Don't forget, I have over 2,000 videos on the channel now, so it does actually take quite a while to compile the footage that I use. If you are working with a gas-fired boiler system, you should find this video very useful indeed. On with the show. There are two factors in making sure a ceramic burner or a blowtorch works. First of all, the jet size relative to the pressure of the fuel that you're using and the proximity of the end of the jet to the cross hole in the Venturi tube. The problem I have is currently I have about four tins of gas, most of them are nearly empty, and just about all of the propane's gone and it's just butane. While I'm waiting for the boiler to raise steam, I'm just playing with my drain cock. This drain cock is very good, it doesn't dribble at all. I'm presuming that you've watched the episode about dribbling drain cocks. And guess what? The carbon monoxide alarm is going off. And this is probably due to the fact that I tried a few different jets out in the ceramic burner, most of which were wrong, and this obviously created some carbon monoxide. I'm still not impressed with the way this gas burner raises steam in the boiler. As soon as the gas pressure drops in the tank due to evaporation, the heat from the burner is insufficient to generate enough steam for the type of steam engine I'd like to use with this plant. So once again, it's back to plan A. Use a sievert burner. This is the one off my blowtorch, and it's the one that I use for most of the silver soldering operations. And in no time at all, even with low gas pressure, the needle starts to climb up the gauge. And this is what I want to see. Not just the boiler sat on the bench for about 20 minutes doing nothing, which was what happened with the ceramic burner. So I think I'm going to use a sievert burner like this one. The big problem with gas firing model steam boilers is chilling of the gas and this is caused by the evaporation of the liquid gas inside the tank. By holding the gas tank in my hand, the heat from my hand causes the gas pressure to increase rapidly before I get frostbite in my left hand. In this one I'm going to show how I made a gas burner that I was going to use for the boiler. I use the term made a gas burner loosely. I went up to Blackgates Engineering and bought one of these. This is a sievert burner head for a sievert gas blowtorch set. And it's identical to the one that I've used for many years for smaller silver soldering operations like silver soldering pipes, etc. Except this is a new one and it's nice and shiny. How long it will stay shiny, I don't know, but for the moment, it's a thing of beauty. Before I can use this burner to heat the water, I need to make a suitable mounting and a gas connection. I'm holding in my left hand an adapter that I made a while back when I was experimenting with gas burners for my Stuart Models Victoria steam plant. I ended up using a modified Max Steam ceramic burner which works beautifully. So this adapter was surplus to requirements. That is until now because I'm going to recycle it. The good thing about using these smaller sievert gas burners for model steam boiler firing is that the hole in the end of it where the gas goes is approximately tapping size for 5 16 by 32. If anything, the hole is slightly larger than it would be if I was cutting this thread in a virgin piece of metal. I'm giving this a good shake to loosen any swarf that is left in the hole because I don't want to block up the jet. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of swarf coming out of the hole. This clip shows the burner head fitted with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch steam union. And normally, I would fit a steam union like this using some Loctite 542 thread sealant but this is just to illustrate the fact that I'm not going to use one of these. I want to make a mounting that is integral with the gas connector. 
I want it to look like it's a purpose-built unit, not just a lash-up with a jubilee clip round it and a piece of bent metal. And that's why I'm going to use this adapter that I made a while back. Even though it doesn't screw into the internal threading on the blowtorch head, I turned the outer part of the adapter to be a nice snug fit in the thread itself. With some Loctite 542 on the internal thread, as well as a silicone o-ring between the adapter and the burner head itself, this should make sure that it's perfectly gas tight. This is what the adapter looked like after I remachined the end. You can see that I cut a recess so it fits within the o-ring. When I screw it together, it really is a good fit. Very, very firm indeed. You have to be very careful when using gas that you don't get any leaks. So that the mounting didn't just look like a lump of square brass, I machined it on my lathe to make it look a little bit more pretty. It's still not a thing of beauty, but it does the job. It's a very secure mounting to hold this burner in place. What you can't see in this clip, because it's not a pretty sight, is me sniffing the chimney. There would be a very bad smell coming out of the chimney if the burner was in the incorrect position and the gas was not being burnt properly. But once I got it in the right position, I put a mark on the baseboard and it's now burning very well. No bad smell at all. With this arrangement, the boiler raised steam very quickly indeed and my carbon monoxide detector in the workshop remained silent. When I move the burner into the flue, it makes a funny noise and the smell out of the chimney is horrendous. So when I move it back to this point, it's perfect. So this is going to be the position where I'm going to permanently fix the burner in the finished installation. It really is quite critical, within about a quarter of an inch in fact. By now the gas in the canister has chilled considerably because evaporating liquid gas causes a drop in temperature, which also means a drop in the gas pressure. But the good news is, even with the drop in pressure, the burner is still providing more than enough heat to raise steam in this boiler. The type of gas that I'm using at the moment is just a tin that I had laying about and it's nearly empty so I would think most of the propane has long since evaporated. I would think that it's running on mainly butane at the moment and chilled butane at that. And the good thing is that the blowtorch head is no longer making the very loud roaring sound and that's why I decided to use one of these burners. It's a little bit on the large side, I admit that, but it doesn't need to be going flat out all the time. And the boiler is at working pressure and blowing off. I much prefer this type of burner to a ceramic burner, but sometimes you have to use a ceramic burner. I've recently made a video about setting up Bix burners, which is a very different process to this. They use an entirely different type of ceramic to the ceramic that I showed earlier on in this video, which, if you get the gas jet in the wrong position, just cremates and they don't work well at all. I recommend that you watch the full three parts of A Quest for Fire. And that's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.